that's confusing. And you kind of got to be familiar and kind of blend in. Yeah. I think that's part of the hard part. Uh, but uh, thank you all. I appreciate that. That was just a little kind of brainstorm exercise to kind of get your thinking, which I see a lot of thought happening in your guys' work. But uh, I'm going to hand it off now to uh, Camilla, who's going to do the language activity with you all. And so and then we'll break for lunch. Can you hear us? Are we all set up? Can you hear us? I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? I need to turn it up, I think. Oh. Like, I need to turn it up. Like, sorry. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. The DJ is. There you yeah. go. All right. Oh, no. Mr. DJ. Yeah. Oh, check. Okay. Check. check. Mic check. There. We're Mic good. check. Two uh, thumb check. Uh, Covert check. Check. <laughs> check. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I um, asked um, Linda to print out some of those the stuff because. Um, I've been in a lot of meetings and I couldn't really create a PowerPoint like I wanted to. But um, mm -hmm. um, Ms. Chappelle, did you do both both of those? Yeah, okay. I did. So the one that has um, just the words, <clears throat> I was asked, um, do I asked Dwayne to give me some words that I could go off of. But um, so and there's a list of those words in, in that, um, in that uh, document that Linda gave you. Um, so in autumn, in autumn um, culture, we we um, we don't have words that separate things, you know, because something that is is always going to be like it's going to have all the stuff. So like you go to school and you have um, you have um, you, you go to school and you have um, the um, like science and math and language, they're all separate. They're categorized. For in autumn, we really don't do that. It's, it's just one thing. Like if you say, like if you said numbers or math, that's going to include, you know, like language and it's going to include science and everything else. So in the same way with art, is there's no real separate word that says this is art and this is not. Because you can look at something that is done um, and you can still find art in it. You can find something in everything that you do. It, it includes that. So again, it's holistic. And the word whole <clears throat> comes from the word uh, um, holistic comes from the word whole to make it, you know, the whole thing. Like I'm going to eat the whole fry bread or the whole tortilla, not just the part of it. So uh, that's how that, that word is, you know, like um, when you talk about uh, huggy. Um, the holistic thing. So the first word there <clears throat> that I um, put is art. Uh, when we, we, again, we don't really have a word that separates that, but the word nato, nato means something that uh, you use it for something that is done. You use it for something that is done that, um, that um, you, you, you know, like you make a, make a sandwich and, and you eat it. I'm done. I'm finished. So actually, the word that when we we talk in language in autumn, when you um, see, you say um, that something is done. The hanato, hanato. So artwork becomes hachunato, um, which means like um, something that has been done already, that has been finished. Because the word nato again means to finish. Um, if I ate up a sandwich and not done, you know, I'm done. If I, if I, I'm, uh, I took my aunt to go shopping and she goes in the store and takes three hours or whatever. And then she comes in and she sits down in the, in the seat, you know, and then she says, not done. I'm done, I'm finished. So in that way, some when you make something, uh, whether it's a drawing or a picture or clay, then you're going to say, nato, natois, haicha natois. So there's two words there, artwork, kaichu nato, natoi, which means that somebody has created it or it's done, and haichu, hachun. Uh, chun means um, 
like chapto chu, chapo chu, chapto chu. Chu means to do something. It is synonymous with the word rain. What is the most sacred thing that happens in the in the desert and in this uh, climate? What is the most sacred thing that happens is uh, rain. So that word ju, the high chu chu, um, it means to to get done or something that is happening. So, so um, again, hi uh, hi chu hi chu, something that somebody did, something that somebody created, and then the next words again to create is nato and chu chu bento chu. Um, when you say it's my piece of work, then you say nye chu nye chu nye chu. Okay, there's four little um, sounds that we have in autumn that um that direct the direct is that direct something <clears throat> so one is the first one is nye with the n with the little thing on top um they call it the spanish and nye when you have nye in front of a word then it means mine so if i say like my come my uh you see my dog nye cox if i say my cat nye me nye nye my house nye ki nye ki when you say your house, you say m, 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 ki, m, koxka, m, mitor, m, 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 that means you. So you hear that in all the conversation when people are talking, <clears throat> you hear that m, nye, you know, so they're saying actually nye or m, me or you. And um, so when um, when you hear those, the next one is um, the when you say our something that that happened to us as you know our so we say t with a t the chun we may maybe somebody created like food or whatever and they say the chun the chun nya chun ma chun the chun both of us so. So again, the artwork, who, who created that, you know, I always um, look at that photo, I mean, that picture of the, uh, at, uh, TOCC, when we were passing by Wiesok Kosher, and that used to be the career center, and there's a drawing on top of that, that, uh, that building there, and I know a lot of people came in to draw that, some of my friends came in, and they helped draw that picture, so I would say, ha chun, because I didn't have a part in it, ha chun, so ha means their work, so Nya is me, ma is you, and t is our, and ha is theirs. So say your car, nya magina, your relative's car, ma magina, your car, <clears> the <throat> magina, maybe a family that owns one car, the magina, and then, then there's a car that it belonged to you, it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to somebody else, ha magina. And ha can be like one person or, you know, a whole bunch of people. So that's how that works. So who get that when you say uh toy? Nah toy, it's um my is it mine? Nya nah toy. Is it your work? Ma nah toy. Or do we both have something to do with it? The nah toy. And and my grandfather, when we go into the museums and to look for you know, like the pottery, then he will say, all oh, those people a long time ago made it, they made it, but it's not just specifically for artwork, just art, like in English, it's it's whatever's completed, whatever's done. <clears throat> so then you look at um, the word to draw, which means, oh, 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 that's how you say it. So oh, oh, means to to make a mark. Oh, 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 oh. And then for writing and drawing is oh, 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 nah, which again, that root word is there, oh, oh, which means to write or draw. So when you uh, look in the dictionary, you see that how do you write something? You say, oh, 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 nah, which is really, again, just the word that means a writing or a drawing. If you go up and look at the petroglyphs out there at um, Tucson, you're going to say, oh, 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 nah, oh, 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 nah. If somebody draws something, oh, oh, no. when somebody writes something, oh, oh, no. oh, oh, because that's what they did. The, the actual word is oh, oh, to write something or draw something. So, oh, and, and that's uh, 
specific um, to uh, things that um, that you do, like um, to create like some kind of a line or you know uh, some kind of a, a drawing or even in the sand when you just draw in the sand, that's ohana, ohana. <clears throat> now the uh, the paint. Uh, when you say um, has mas, ma is the word to give, ma is the showing. So when a baby is born, they say mas at mas. When you ask somebody, uh, what does it look like? You say fra o mas, mas. So um, mas it means to to make something um, like what what are the colors? What is the shades? What are this? You know, so masik is generally the word for for paint. There are some other words, a lot of them are Spanish words that we've adopted a long time ago, but actually the word for um, just to um, just to paint is the boy masik, to make it show, to make it different, okay? And then you have your colors there, and, and that document that, uh, that um, uh, Linda passed out, the top, there's all these autumn, um, colors that you can write them in as notes when I go through them. But <clears throat> you look for, um, in autumn, there are only um, seven colors that we actually have as Aboriginal autumn colors. There are some colors that were brought in by, by the outside world. And you see that evident in the song language or in the speech language. When you look through the speech, there's a book called um, Rain, house, and ocean, and in that book it talks about autumn speeches and how these proverbs and things that they used to say uh, to the spirits. So in those ceremonies, you never see certain colors. You only see these ones that I'm mentioning um, right now, um, because those are the Aboriginal autumn colors. When you sing a song, you're never going to hear certain colors because they didn't exist back then. So that's how this um, this works. So the first color, uh, red, is called swook, swook. So that's red. If you see the red on the other paper, you can just look for swook, S hyphen, W, E, G. Uh, I think there's a, a brief I on the end. So red, that was one of the, the Aboriginal colors. Um, symbolizes a lot of things in, in um, in the culture of lightning is one of those red things. Power is one of those red things. When um, in our community, San Rosa, we use the red color for our toka sticks and the aura and the kinskut and all that stuff. That's our color and that's why we chose it because it means power. So, um, <clears throat> and then the next one is green. Schutak. Schutak. That's green. Now, green is the the color that is most favored by autumn in most of the songs and everything you most of the time, you're always going to hear green. Um, because what is, when the trees are all, you know, like, you know, all strike and all this, and then the rain comes, what happens? The trees turn green. So that's something that autumn wanted to see all the time is that the greenness in the trees and in the foliage and in nature because that means that the rain had just come and there's water there. So again, uh, green. And if you look by the rivers, there's all these trees and it's just green right there. So again, that's one of the favorite colors, green. Now I have to tell you that a long time ago, there was no distinction between green and blue. There was just two. And if you look in the song language and those speeches that I talk about, sometimes they'll mention green and they'll say the sky. Well, we know it as blue. But a long time ago, all those colors that were blue and green hues, those were all called stuotak. So um, just remember that. Then um, <clears throat> yellow, uh, swam, swam, uh, S hyphen U A M, swam is the color um, for like the little flowers and stuff. So swam is in the middle. And then the next color that they they um, have that they had a long time ago, they had a, a word for is stuk, stuk. Now stuk doesn't really mean black. You, we write it as black because that's how identify it. That's how it was brought across. But actually, stuk really means darker. When you put the a definition to the word stuk, you say darker. 
when something is darker. If you go outside, sun goes down, and you say that it's darker outside, you know, maybe um, maybe uh, you can still see things, but it's just darker. So even then, when we call uh, like uh, black people, when you say "stukju," that doesn't really mean black people. That means they're just darker, you know, because summertime my skin gets black, and I'm going to be a stukju or whatever. And then you know, as you go on, and they start to you know, skin color follicles fall off. So again, that that's what that means. Now white is stuha, stuha, and some dialects is stu, stu. Um, it just means white. I mean, it just this white. And then the next way, uh, when it's a uh, gray, uh, skomak, skomak, s hyphen k o colon um, m a g, skomak. Um, the um, in some dialects they use the brown as also as the skomak. So if you're in dialect like mostly to the south. And somebody says skomak, you kind of wonder which one are they talking about, gray or are they talking about brown? Um, and then you have your brown, which again can be skomak. There's a word there, it's called, it's written S K, I mean, S hyphen K, uh, K U B J U. It's skubju, skubju, skubju. Now, because again, the way people pronounce things, when the people that, uh, the, especially the young people, they say scooby-ju, scooby-ju. And so the kids like that word when I tell them, oh, brown means scooby, oh, scooby-doo, scooby-doo, scooby-doo. And that's okay, they, they, they remember, because scooby-doo is brown, you know. So, but again, uh, scooby-ju is actually the, the way that most people pronounce it in the dialects. And then the next colors um, are all those ones that were brought across from uh, Hispanic words because we didn't have those words a long time ago. Uh, we didn't have the word orange. So the word narash is what we call an orange. So snarash mak means something that is orange uh, hue. And a long time ago in the uh, autumn, or when the, how they recognized orange is just a shade of red. So it was just that uh, So you can say suwuk and, and you you kind of have to guess, no, that's orange. Well, a long time ago, they didn't have the word orange. So that's why we use that Mexican word, that Hispanic word um, um, for orange. Uh, now the next one is has hyphen A colon N, uh, Spanish N, I, L-I-G, um, it We use it for blue. But like I said, a long time ago, that was the color for blue and green. So what's happening is that um, when they came, they actually identified something that is blue and separate it from the green to, uh, to make it more, how do you say, um, detailed. Uh, English is full of a lot of details. English words, uh, there's about uh, 300, 50,000 words in the English language. In autumn, we only have 8,000 words. So a lot of words we can't say, and that's why a lot of them are mixed together. They mean the same thing. So when they brought that, there's a word that they brought also, which means uh, angel, angel in English. They say angel, angel. So autumn take that word and say anir, anir, anir. So when the People in the, you know, the church talk about angels. They're in the sky up there. And, you know, you look at that. And so they use that to connect with the blue, the blue sky. So they call that sanirmak, that color blue, sanirmak. And then purple, again, we didn't really have a purple. It was mostly red, what we call purple red, um, reddish hue. Um, so purple came and uh, the... Um, um, they wanted to identify that, so they looked for the closest thing. What what is purple in the desert? And they found out ipai, ipai the the prickly pear fruit. That's very very purple. So they used that to identify what purple is, and that's how we get that sanirmak. I know what is that called? Um, ipai mak. 
e pie. E pie again is um, the um, prickly pear fruit. And then somebody asked me one time, how do you say pink? You know, the, there's, there's no way to really say pink, but people have devised ways. In the 1970s, somebody came up with a word, uh, but it really wasn't a word. It was more descriptive. So pink was what, when you, when you um, um, take that word apart, it really means the lighter red or the red white. So, um, uh, stuha must work. Stuha must work. That became the pink color, even though you know not many people use it for that. But you can do that to um, to the color green. You know when you say like an olive green and uh, then uh, letter uh, different from a yellow. I mean a, a green that has like a lighter color. You would just always say stuha ma stuha. The lighter green or Stohamaswuk or stohamaschuk, you know, that's that's how some people say gray because it's not really black, but it's kind of whitish, you know. So again, those are the colors um, that we use in our time. Pew, uh, Moab and Puce and all those, I have no idea what, what, what they call those, but you would just take that root word and figure it out. Most of them are descriptive. Now, paintbrush is just a tool, a tool, a, and if you look way on top of um, the, the I mean on top the massage massage on paint um masi takut masi takut every time you say kud in most of all the words they become you know that's a tool so taikut the tool to sit on to to sit down on and waikut um all those when you hear that ku retro d you're gonna hear so masita kut just means that thing that you use to to color masita kut and uh, painting when you've done something you by um, masich masich masik masik masich masik there it didn't write that word masik when when you're talking about colors shao mas masik you know uh, Masik schuk, masik, masik stuotak, masik. So, masik is that word to make uh, to kind of identify colors. And again, mask. If you think about that word, mas, they use that like I said for when a baby is born. So a baby is inside the mother's womb, and when it comes out, it's showing itself. So mas, it became born, mas. So the same thing with colors is that when you do something, you're showing somebody what 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 uh, you want them to see, and so colors becomes like that, masik, and then um, so but it's synonymous with the word to be born, and then movement. Uh, I don't know. There's many many different kind. I just wrote this one down, uchiki, uh, which means to shake or to kind of like when somebody's going like that or. You know, maybe they're mm -hmm. dancing and you can call it uh, waira or you can call it uh, or whatever. But most of but whatever is actually happening is their body is shaking or moving. So you can say that uh, be uchikit, uchit, uchikit, uchikit, achu uchikit. They're really shaking. And then uh, on the hasi achu, hasi achu, again, the word ju means to act or to, to, to show something or to make movement. Hasi achu which means that the thing is moving, that the, the person is moving, that it's not uh, not static, it's not just standing there, but it's moving. And then the last one uh, that um, the way to ask for is uh, the word for splatter. Um, the word, um, there's, there's a word that we use that um, when, like if you do a blessing someplace, uh, and you you do the the whatever you need to do, and, and we we do that the the, the different ceremonies to have the children's shrine, um, it's coming up next year in May, the renewal ceremony. We clean the whole thing out, and then then they do the the, the ceremony. And when they finish, they get some water and get some shuke, and put the the creosote inside the water, and then they they sprinkle it on there. They sprinkle it on the thing. So that's kind of like blessing or, you know, like kind of like lock it down. But what's happening is that what we've done, you throw the water on there to lock it down, 
to make you know that this is the way that that the the power is now gonna work. So they call that word hats, like hats, like hats, mat, hats. So splattering is like that, like well, same hats. Um, if somebody was standing there next to you, whatever, and they maybe I don't know something happened and they 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 got blood, you know, like blood flying all over and it splatters on you. You say about hats. You know, it, it's a bad thing, but then it's the same thing. It's just the word that that uh, recognizes, that uh, defines that um, what happened, that uh, dis descriptive word. So hats would be the word to splatter something, um, even your words. Um, and then, but the, like, um, like I said, mostly in blessing, but uh, I seen, you know, in art, how you you, you take a, like a toothbrush or whatever, go like that. It's the same thing. It's the act of um, splattering, which again is the hats, not the hats. Um, sometimes um, when you get a blessing from certain people and everybody gets lined up, okay, we're gonna throw the ho holy water on you or whatever, we're gonna sprinkle you with water. Then they say hats, because you can't do that with smoke. You can't do that with dirt. You only do that with water. So the hats, hats. So that's that word there, and those are the words that um, Dwayne had sent. And just kind of going real fast, a little bit of history, how the words came to be, and how uh, how will you use them? Okay. Is there anything else, or? I think that's it, Camillus. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Thank you, Camillus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll do this. I need to